This is an extract from the Leader podcast by The Evening Standard. The whole thing is available on all major podcast providers. MI5 says it's having to protect research into a coronavirus vaccine from interference by saboteurs. Britain's top spy, Ken McCallum, says the pandemic's brought an intense phase of new challenges for the service. And he revealed a few other things too. Our Home Affairs editor, Martin Bentham, was listening in and he's with me now. Martin, what are the threats that MI5's having to keep our vaccine research safe from? Uh, well, the new head of MI5, who's giving his first media appearance today, uh, albeit online, was making the point that, like everybody else, COVID has dominated. And one of the things he mentioned was this issue of protecting the integrity of our world-beating coronavirus research. And he made the point that, first of all, the global prize for being the first to get a vaccine is very big. And so it's understandable that lots of people are interested in that. And obviously, not everybody uh, wants to get it by fair means. So what he was talking about was the, the risk of people trying to steal it or indeed interfere with it in some shape or form, manipulate data, and first of all, either to undermine the credibility and the, the, the efficacy of any of any work that's going on, and also to undermine its credibility in particular, and to make it unreliable, because if you obviously skew the data or whatever, and the data doesn't stack up. So, but when you think about it, I suppose it makes it makes unfortunate sense, doesn't it, that people who see this as a, a matter of competition, which it hardly should be, but on the other hand, given that there are fears, aren't that there'll be a fight for who can get hold of enough vaccine and who can get the rewards for producing it first, that this sort of thing might happen. And the prestige, I mean, it's not so much about, I wouldn't have thought about commercial reward. It's more about the prestige also of having it. But yeah, it was quite an interesting warning, clearly. He didn't name who might be targeting a UK virus. But it is interesting that Later on, he did talk about the issues being faced by nation states, isn't it? Russia, China, that type of thing. Yes, I mean, they've talked before about this and he gave quite a bit more detail about the malign influence and malign actions of of China and Russia. Um, In respect of China, he talked quite interestingly about how... uh, moves to try to interfere in our democratic processes and indeed not just ours but he said that mi5 had helped to thwart uh, something which was aimed at the european union and you know, discrediting something negative towards them which he cited as an example which which i'm sure is correct of how our security service and other intelligence agencies are going to be uh, continuing cooperating with our european partners and trying to help them where they can in a mutually beneficial way post-Brexit, which we're now in that phase, of course, talked about both China and Russia in terms of hostile state activity, again, intellectual property theft and so on, but also just this trying to influence political debate. And he talked about the threats to, to democracy of using troll farms, social media influencing campaigns, and all these type of different areas where states that want to undermine our states and our businesses or to steal from our businesses, for example, are continuing to be active and in some cases more active. And in the case of China, he said well, it's a difficult balance because we, there are global opportunities for us. We want to cooperate on issues like climate change with the Chinese and indeed there are commercial opportunities. So it's a, it's a difficult judgment and sensitive one, but he did say that well, whilst we should be trying to take those opportunities and do that and work in a positive way and get the good things out of working with China, there are also risks to working with them that we need to be very careful about. And the same would really reply to, to Russia, which again has had um, hostile intent, as we saw in the Salisbury poisoning. And uh, Mr. McCallum, he mentioned the Alex Neval, the poisoning, which happened and obviously went to Germany, uh, survived the uh, Novichok poisoning. I thought it was really interesting how much he revealed about how much MI5 is actually working on... COVID-19 itself. He was talking about helping to build hospitals and actually helping with research as well, wasn't he? Yes. Well, he, he, he talked about that. And obviously, they have some medically trained staff, in fact. So he released some of those at the time of the, the initial pandemic at its height. And presumably, that may well happen again, actually, as, as things unfortunately deteriorate. And then, yes, the other thing he talked about was, of course, MI5 has done research into the dispersal of chemical agents and so on to understand how better to protect because one of their roles is in protective security so they're experts and give advice to all sorts of building projects and and 
town halls and so on about how to protect the public realm and how to protect, protect commercial premises. Part of that protective work has also been aimed at understanding how viruses and, and uh, so sort of biological agents might spread. And so what they've done is try to, to use some of that expertise and contribute to that to understanding how droplets, in this case containing COVID-19, might spread clearly another area of the great technical expertise which exists within a, a, an organisation like MI5 being put to uses and positive uses, which you wouldn't necessarily have thought were top of the list of things that you'd expect them to do. 